All right, folks, if you're looking for an EV full electric vehicle and you haven't gotten a chance to test drive one yet and you're thinking of one like the Chevy Bolt, you're going to want to watch this video because I'm going to take you for a ride in this slate gray one right here. Now, the Bolt is a five passenger vehicle. It's a hatchback style, so you have your door that opens in the back here for cargo space. Uh, there is a small amount of cargo space underneath the floor here, just like that. And of course, you can fold your seats down flat. So here's your cargo space with your seats folded down. Gives you a nice amount of room. Every bolt's going to come with this. This is your charger, okay? This is what you would plug into a regular household style plug. That gives you four miles for every hour you have it plugged in, okay? The other way to do it is your level two charger, which will give you about 25 miles for every hour you have it plugged in. That's going to plug into this port here. Drop that down, that's DC fast charging. I actually have one right over there at the dealership. That'll give you about 90 minutes for every, uh, or 90 minutes and a half hour, actually. I say this in probably every video I ever do. I am six foot five. I got headroom, I got leg room. My knees are straight to the seat. You know, it's comfortable. There's a couple USB chargers in the back so you can keep devices charged. And because this is a Premier, you also have heated seats. This is your basic layout in the vehicle. Uh, it's very easy. Windows, mirrors, locks, nice and simple. Your uh, headlights, which are automatic, they go on and off, do everything by themselves. You have your turn signals, you know, high beams, that sort of thing. This is auto high beams, where they'll go on and off by themselves based on how much light is coming at the vehicle. Wipers, nice and easy, up, intermittent, up again for low, up again for high. So very simple controls, very basic controls. You have cruise control here on the left, uh, heated steering wheel in this model. You also have lane keep assist with lane departure warning and your forward collision alert. The camera that's facing forward can actually sense the lane lines and it can sense vehicles. So it can actually assist by nudging the steering wheel in either direction to put you back in your lane. It could also, anything under 50 miles per hour can apply brake to stop the vehicle to either lessen an impact or to avoid it altogether. And uh, there's just some buttons that you can adjust how, how big that gap is and how soon you get those warnings. On this side here, you have a uh, phone for Bluetooth, voice command, and you have some buttons here for your information center. Now that's up in the front. So as I press the down arrow, it's gonna give you all different trip odometers, tire pressures, you know, things like that, things that you can keep an eye on. The screen we're looking at right now, it says we can do about 144 miles, right? Uh, maximum of 169 and a minimum of 118. This is how much battery we have left, and based on how you drive, you're gonna bring that battery down, okay? If you have a heavy foot and you drive real fast, you're gonna use battery faster than somebody that drives a little conservatively. On the right-hand side here, it shows your power meter. So right now we got one, two kilowatts of power that we're using. As, you, uh, as we drive, you'll see this will increase in yellow when you're using power. It'll drop down in green when we're gaining battery or we're using regenerative braking. Now, regenerative braking happens anytime you let go of the throttle and you coast. You're gonna capture some of the energy of the vehicle slowing down, Put it back into the battery. There's also a regenerative braking paddle, which I love. I drive a Chevy Volt uh, every day and I use the paddle constantly. It's right here on the steering wheel. You press and hold. As you hold it, it's going to do a higher level of regenerative braking. So when you're stopping towards a red light or you're stopping in traffic or a stop sign, rather than using your actual foot brake, you can hold that, capture a little bit of energy in the battery, uh, save your brake life, and, uh, and have fun while driving. It makes it more of an experience. The other way you can do it is if you're driving low. So right now we're going to go to drive. If I drop down to L for low, that's going to be one pedal driving. And essentially what that is, again, it's regenerative braking. It's a higher level. So as you let go of the throttle, you're going to slow down faster. I mean, you can drive this car all around town and really never have to hit your brake pedal unless you have to stop at an emergency or you want to hold the vehicle when you make a complete stop, which actually right now I'm not on the brake. I'm not on the throttle and I'm in drive in low and I'm not going anywhere. The car's not gonna roll. So on our center screen here, you have a button up on top with these little symbols. That brings up all your different apps and things like that. Uh, you do have audio, obviously, which is your AM, FM, satellite radio. You can Bluetooth stream from devices. Phone is gonna be to pair phones uh, up to five. Projection is awesome. Uh, that's for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Plug your phone in. It can put Waze, Google Maps, Apple Maps, Pandora, you know, all the apps that they allow can be put right on the screen. 
So you're using the screen and you're using voice control rather than using your phone. Settings, you can go through to change a bunch of settings. Gallery has changed. Uh, if you plug a USB in, you can see photos and all. It used to be able to do video. I couldn't get video to work in this. I was trying it once. Uh, it might've been the format that it was in. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but apparently, you, obviously you can only view video uh, while you're in park. It wouldn't let you do it while you were in drive. Uh, camera system in a Premiere. You have a front camera. You can press here for a back camera. You can turn your guidelines on or off. And you have a surround vision camera. This takes four images, stitches it together, and gives you sort of a bird's eye view of where you are on the road. You also have a home screen here. Now this you can kind of go through, you have your last charge information. If your phone was paired, you'd see it. Uh, if you had a connected device, your radio, it kind of gives you a little bit of everything. Then you have your energy button as well. Energy gives you like a flow chart. It gives you charging info. It's gonna show you when you should be completed charging. You can uh, set it to eight or 12 amps. You can set departure times, kind of customize when you want the vehicle to charge. You have some information here on different settings. Uh, your driving, your technique, your climate, you know, is it colder, hotter? Uh, those are the things that really drive and impact the amount of range you're going to get, right? So the number one is your driver technique. Again, heavy foot, heavy on the, on the throttle, you're going to get less battery than someone who's more conservative. Uh, the terrain, if you're a lot of hills in your area, you're going to use more battery climbing those hills. The temperature, you lose battery or use more when it's cold out. Uh, climate settings, if you have your fan on, I noticed in the Volt, if I have the heat on max, I get less battery coming back and forth to work than I do if I don't run you know, the air conditioning or the heat at all. So, you know, those sort of things can determine how much range you get out of the vehicle. But enough talk, let's go for a ride. Let me show you what this car is all about. I'm gonna take our normal test drive route that we always take with our clients and see what you think. Nice quick U-turn there. It's a very good turning radius. The vehicle is very maneuverable. If you're in the area here in New Jersey and you ever feel like stopping by and driving, a uh, of EV car or any car for that matter. Do you want to drive a Bolt? I'm at Schumacher Chevrolet of Livingston in northern New Jersey. Be more than happy to help you out. You can message me uh, in the comments below or direct message me. I'm also on Facebook at Dave B Sells Chevy. So you can like and follow there if you'd like. And follow there. It's a beautiful day here in New Jersey today. It's sunny, a little windy, but not too bad. 46 degrees. Now, when I start my test drives, we basically pull out right here and right before that light where it says all turns, we make a right hand turn. And I start down that road. It's pretty bumpy in spots, so it's going to give a, a real good suspension test, a good feel for the vehicle and how it's going to handle some uh, some bumps along the road. So here we go. Bumpy road. It does have a very solid feel. Um, you know, it's quiet, very quiet actually. You do feel, uh, you feel the bumps. It's maybe uh, not quite as soft. It's more of a sporty, uh, sportier ride, I guess you would say. A little tighter suspension, yet, you know, it doesn't jostle you around. Right now I'm using my brake pedal. I'm just slowing down, I'm in drive. I'm doing nothing extra than driving it just like a regular car. No extra ways of trying to capture battery. As you can see here, we're using kilowatts. So as I accelerate, you're using, and if I was to slow down, this is just me coasting. This is me now coasting in low, and this is now me with the paddle. And basically come to a complete stop. I did go into low, my foot is on the throttle, and I'm never gonna let go of the throttle and I'm never gonna put pressure on the brake. And I'm gonna drive around for a little while and show you how the vehicle basically can drive with one pedal. So here we are, I let go to throttle completely there and I come to a complete stop. I can look left, there's no one there. I go back to the throttle and I accelerate. They also have instant torque at really any speed, you know, any speed that it can go anyway. If you haven't driven an electric car, please go do it. Whatever brand it is, whatever model it is, it is so cool. And I'm a car nut. I've had a couple of Corvettes. I've had a 400 horsepower Trailblazer. I've had a, I just got rid of a Jeep Wrangler that I had. And I got to tell you, the Volt that I'm driving now, and my wife also has one, uh, it's, it's literally the best car I've ever driven. Like, I absolutely love it. And this Bolt is even, uh, even better being full electric. just instant power 
Now I'm coasting completely, no feet on the gas, no feet on the brake. I'm gonna use a little bit more, I don't even need it. I was gonna hit the paddle, but here we are. We're coming to a complete stop without ever doing anything. So now let's feel the merging power here. That's zero to 60. So here, as we come up to this red light, we're just letting go of the throttle. I'm still barely on it. Now I'm off it completely. And I come to a complete stop actually sooner than I wanted to. I know this probably sounds very repetitive in this. I'm just trying to give you a play-by-play -play on what it's like to drive this car. So that's our lane departure warning that's lit up there. So that means the camera can see the lane lines. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait till I have a straightaway and when it's safe, I'm gonna let the vehicle drift over the line a little bit and show you what it does. There's also a green car symbol at the bottom now, which lit up because there's a car in front of me. The camera sees that vehicle, but it lost the lane lines. All right, now the lane lines are back on. So let's drift over a little bit. It's actually turning the wheel and it just beeped. It put me right back in my lane. Now, this is a perfect example. We're actually driving pretty much into a, a sun here. The camera can get blinded by the sun. You know, it'll get blinded just like our eyes will. So if the camera's blinded, it might not see the lane lines or if there's snow on the road or, or whatever the case may be, maybe water on the road, it might not see them. So the idea is if those lights, those symbols aren't lit, that basically means that the system is not gonna do anything. So this is not a system to rely on. This is something that is, uh, you know, a backup, a second set of eyes to maybe get you out of a jam if uh, if you happen to drift or doze off on the road or something like that. So what I'd be curious to find out is who owns a, a Bolt or a Tesla or a Volt or any EV vehicle. What are your uh, what are your experiences? What do you think? How do you compare it to gas cars you've had in the past? I'd love to have a discussion. So put your comments below. Let's have a discussion on what your thoughts are. I love it. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back to just regular drive. We just pull this down and I'm gonna show you and I'm gonna use the paddle a little bit more. We also have what's called a rear view camera mirror. So that right there, you can see the GoPro. That's a regular mirror. If I pull this lever down, it gives you a camera image where you can literally see the whole road behind you. Really pretty cool feature to have. All right, so we're gonna stop at this light. I am now holding the paddle. Did not put my foot on the brake yet. Holding the paddle, holding the paddle, holding the paddle. Now I need my brake. All right, so there I actually hit the brakes to come to a complete stop because the paddle wasn't enough. I didn't time it quite right. You gotta drive one of these. It really is fun. I had a Corvette, it was a 2007. It was a six-speed manual transmission. My Jeep Wrangler was a six-speed manual transmission. Um, I like to be involved in the driving, uh, which actually autonomous vehicles kind of scares me because I enjoy driving. The ability to drive one pedal, the ability to use the paddle, it really makes the driving experience a little bit more fun. You can see we stay very level in turns. You know, there's a lot of battery, there's a lot of weight, and it's all very low in the vehicle. And due to that, the vehicles handle very well. Like you just saw in that gauge, when I hit the throttle like that, it turned yellow. The idea is to keep that ring green. Uh, the greener it is, the more efficient you're driving the vehicle. If you get to yellow like that, it means you're using a little bit more battery. I know Chevy's working on these autonomous vehicles and they have a bolt set up that basically doesn't have a steering wheel. And I can't imagine just sitting here in a car like this and it just driving itself, you know, like a carnival ride. Like that's gonna be absolutely insane. It's on its way, oh, five, 10 years maybe. Could be a whole new world. Let's again feel out the power. A question you may have that I'm gonna answer up front. When you use your regenerative braking paddle or when you're in uh, low and you're driving in low, as the vehicle is slowing, your brake lights are coming on. So drivers behind you will know that you're slowing down even though you're not hitting the brake pedal. We are now done with our test drive. I uh, appreciate you coming along. I hope you had a good time. I highly recommend you go to a dealership around you and drive one. Again, if you're around me, by all means, reach out. 
stop by and be happy to help out. Happy to show you everything I know about the vehicle. And uh, have a pleasant day.